Okay, let's get started. Uh, Dr. Cohen, I'm Dr. Cohen. I've changed. The, I've, cut, I've changed Dr. Cohen speaking to us. Uh, he wants to get something out of the way for patients to save money on medications. That is a real problem. And so, Dr. Cohen, you have the floor. Um, I appreciate y'all letting me talk today. I know y'all got a lot of stuff going on, and I appreciate all the work y'all do here. Um, anyway, I'm a general. In, I'm a general internist. Um, I'm an Atlanta native. I've been working in Cobb County for thirty something years, um, doing general internal medicine. Um, if y'all can't hear me, okay, let me know. Um, anyway, over the last thirty something years, um, two things happened. I got older, and my patients did too, which means that most everybody I see nowadays is on Medicare, which covers uh, people who are sixty five or older. Um, as well as people with certain disabilities that are younger than that age. Um, before I get into the topic of the talk, which is to help that population, um, just want to kind of give you a little bit of family story. Uh, that's my mom, Dot Cohen. Um, when mom was 73, um, she was still involved in a million volunteer activities around town. She was um, the oldest woman that year to do a 60 mile come and walk for breast cancer. Is this cutting in and out or can y'all keep hearing me okay? Okay. Um, anyway, uh, so she did the 60 mile walk for breast cancer when she was 73. Uh, when she, she was 75, she was dying from lung cancer. Um, prior to her death, she was prescribed a medicine uh, that was $1,500 a month. Her Medicare insurance didn't pay for it. Um, and for our family, that wasn't a barrier. Unfortunately, it didn't do her any good. Two years later, I was talking to um, an oncologist about my mom's experience, and he said none of the Medicare insurance plans in the Atlanta area paid for that drug. He said if he could get it donated, um, they got it. Otherwise, they had to settle for a second-line therapy. Uh, through the medical miracle of drug inflation, uh, two years later, the cost of the medicine had gone from 18000 a year to $79,000 a year. Um, I got a quick question for everybody in the room. Um, let's say over the next two weeks you get half a dozen people, friends, relatives, constituents, telling you all that their um, the medicine recommended by their doctor costs seventy nine thousand dollars a year, and they don't have the money. Um, how many of y'all think y'all have a solution for them? Um, in ten minutes, I think you're going to have a different answer to that question. Um, anyway, we all know how um, healthcare costs have been exploding. Um, let's. I'm not going to talk to y'all about IT issues today, I promise. Um, how do I, um, I think I need a little help with this, I'm afraid. Uh, here we go. Anyway, uh, when I was applying to med school in 78, uh, health care was $200 billion a year in the U.S. Uh, now it's $3.5 trillion. And what are the consequences of the high cost of care and the uh, high cost of drugs? Uh, well, 25% of people with cancer um, miss at least some of their, a quarter of the, some of their medicines because they can't afford the, to pay for their cancer medicines. Um, a study a few years ago said that not, people not taking their medicines, which frequently happens due to the cost, causes about 100,000 deaths a year. Um, just think about it. If we had two jumbo jets a week crashing and 100,000 people a year dying from plane crashes, everybody would be jumping on it. This is something that kind of happens under the radar and it's really not addressed the way it could be. Um, obviously, if you've got limited resources, it's harder to pay for your medicines. The Atlanta Food Bank said that 73% of people who are food challenged end up choosing between paying for their medicines and their food. And I think most of us know if you've got to make that choice, what's going to get paid for? Um, I wish I had the answer to all the problems with health care costs in the country. Unfortunately, I'm not that smart. But I am going to tell you all about how you all can take some steps to help the 1.7 million people in Georgia on Medicare significantly lower their medical costs. Um, to go over a few details, Medicare covers people that are 65 or older, and again, ones with certain disabilities. It's not Medicaid. It's not the Affordable Care Act or Obamacare. 
there's several kinds of Medicare. Before uh, 2006, um, the federal government didn't do anything to help pay for medicines for people if they were on Medicare. Um, you got Medicare A that you can get, which covers inpatient care and nursing homes. You got Medicare B, which basically covers outpatient um, issues like doctor's visits, x-rays, etc. Under President Bush, uh, people had the option, they don't have to, but they have the option of choosing two different kinds of plans to pay for their medicines. One is the Medicare D or drug plans that are offered by private insurance companies, Umana, Blue Cross, et cetera, and those just pay for medicines. The other option is to go with the Medicare Advantage plan, which is basically like an HMO. If you choose that, you're picking something that covers your medicines, your doctors, your hospitals, et cetera. So I'm saying that people can save a lot of money on this. Um, why are those savings uh, possible? Well, in Atlanta, you've got over 50 plans to help pay for medicines. Um, and just like, I don't know if y'all, some of y'all are probably on Medicare, some of y'all aren't. But if you've got any in health insurance, your insurance is going to pay for some medicines. It's not going to pay for others. Um, it's going to have different co-pays depending on what medicine you pick. Uh, different insurance plans are going to have co-pays and different deductibles before they'll start to pay the bills. Uh, there was a study in 2009 that showed that uh, the average person could save $368 a year if they w knew which plan was the cheapest that covered their medicines. For me and my family, if I got to pay an extra 400 bucks a year to get us the care we need, it's nothing. That's not true of my patients. Uh, for a lot of my patients, that's a big barrier. And, you know, maybe you say $400 a year isn't a big deal. Well, if you multiply that by the 1.7 million people in Georgia on Medicare, uh, that's $625 million a year or $6 billion over 10 years. Um, I think most people would say that's a lot of money. In the U.S., it's $22 billion a year, which, again, I think most people would say is a lot of money. Again, these, three, these numbers are based on older data. Actually, between 2011 and 2015, the average out-of-pocket cost for uh, medicine if you were on Medicare D went up 50%. So maybe it's more than these numbers I'm quoting. But even if it's not, I think that's a lot of money. Anyway, this was my dad. Uh, he was a psychiatrist in Atlanta for uh, almost 60 years. Uh, dad was always real active when he was in his early 80s. He was still going to the Y every day to work out. Um, when he was in his early 80s, I also found out that um, he hadn't bothered picking um, a Medicare plan to pay for his medicines. Um, like I said, these plans are optional. I said, well, why didn't you do that? He says, well, I don't take any medicines. Why do I need to pay a premium for that? And I said, well, what if you get cancer like mom did? You could have $100,000 a year. And he said, oh, that makes sense. And he let me um, set him up for a plan. Um, I would tell you, um, he's a doctor. He had his iPad. He had his iPhone. But this is complicated. He couldn't have done it on his own. Um, my dad's not, oops. Um, my dad is not that exceptional. Um, there's actually 8 million people in the U.S., and I'd estimate maybe several hundred thousand in Georgia that haven't bothered picking a plan for one reason or another. Uh, some people think that... Sure. Okay. Thank you. Uh, some people think they can't afford the premiums for it. Um, there's actually about 15 plans in Georgia that you can get to cover your medicines that have a $0 premium. Um, just to give you two of many examples from my practice, um, I was seeing a retired nurse. Um, you would think an RN would know about this stuff uh, because she was on dialysis, she was on Medicare, and I'm seeing her in the hospital and I'm saying, boy, you're taking a lot of medicines, how much do they cost you? She told me how much it was. Turned out she hadn't picked a plan. I said, why didn't you pick it? She said, yeah, I thought maybe that might be a good idea. And I kind of said, yeah, it would be a good idea. Had another patient with leukemia who, um, again, didn't, it was a kind that didn't require any treatment at the time. And he said, he didn't need any medicines. Why did he pay for a premium? I said, what are you going to do if your leukemia get wor got worse? Uh, lo and behold, a month later, his leukemia progressed, and his oncologist recommended a medicine that cost $114,000 a year. Lucky for him, this happened around the time of open enrollment. Um, took me about three minutes to use an online resource. I'm going to show you all in a minute. And I showed him that the plans in the Atlanta area could cost anywhere from three to $9,000 a year, depending on which plan he chose. And 
big surprise. He went with a $3,000 a year plan. Um, but the oncologist that I've been speaking with uh, had a plan to give him a less satisfactory medicine if he couldn't, if he, this, that hadn't happened. So again, um, I'm not going to pretend that everybody in the legislature is going to agree on what to do about health care, Medicaid expansion, et cetera, in the state. But I think most people would agree that you shouldn't not get your diabetes, your cancer, et cetera, treated because you don't know a phone number to call to get help or you don't know a website to go to. Anyway, I got really interested in this and set up a nonprofit a few years ago when this patient of mine um, who had, was taking a lot of medicines came in about to cry. I said, what's going on? She said, well, I'm giving my house to the bank and moving in with relatives because I had to choose between my medicines and my mortgage. I thought, how stupid is this that people don't know about this? Um, there's two, type, two free federally funded resources I want to go over with you all now. The first is the Medicare Plan Finder. It's on Medicare.gov. Uh, basically, it gives you the choice to put in your zip code and your medicines, and it gives you an estimate of the out-of-the-pocket costs for all the plans available in your area. And I'm just going to walk you through a few of these screens. You can click on Find Drug and Health Plans. You say you want to um, look at what your options are. You say you want a drug plan or a Medicare Advantage plan. You say you want to know what your drug costs are. Talk about how you fill your prescriptions, either in the mail or at a local pharmacy. You go through a couple screens, putting in the medicines you're taking. And then at the end, you get a list like this. It shows all the medicines you're taking. Um, and again, when I do this for my patients, since I know what I'm doing, it usually takes me somewhere between three and ten minutes, depending on how many medicines they're taking. Then when you finish, you get a couple of reports. You can see just the drug plans, the Medicare D plans that are available for you, uh, with the estimated out-of-pocket costs going from low to high. Or you can see the Medicare Advantage plans. Okay, so that's the Medicare plan finder. Um, obviously, a lot of older people aren't going to be computer literate. I will tell you all, I've had a lot of my younger patients that were interested because they wanted to help their family, just like I wanted to help my parents with this. Um, and also, there's an organization called Georgia Cares, you all may know of. It's under the Department of Aging, and it basically provides free one-on-one -on -one counseling for health and insurance options for um, people throughout the state and a number of offices. It's staffed by volunteers. There's a similar organization in every state. I'm throwing this out to y'all because I think most people here probably have relatives who live in other states. If you want to help your relatives or friends in other states, you can go to the ship to center.org. The SHIP stands for State Health Insurance Assistance Program. And you can find the um, similar organization throughout the country. Um, <laughs> To say this is complicated is an understatement. I mean, I've helped a number of my colleagues that are doctors that have been in the field for 30-something years who couldn't figure out how, what, how to do this. Um, I think Georgia Cares is a great resource. It's limited. Um, I uh, spoke with somebody who kind of helps oversee the program, and she said they had somewhere between one and 200 uh, volunteers that provided counseling. And I think they wanted the... Um, people to provide the counseling for hour, four hours a month. Uh, so if you look at 200 people at four hours a month, that's the equivalent of like five full-time employees. Um, I would say if you were going to spend an hour with each of the 1.7 million people in Georgia on Medicare, you need 700 full-time employees to do that. So five is quite a bit less than 700. So, um, and I want to help my patients with this, but um, I'm Southern, so I'm kind of slow. I don't know how to walk around to 1.7 million people and tell them about this. So I set up this website. It's a 501c3. If I wanted to make money out of it, I could if, if I want the IRS to come after me, which I really don't. Um, it's got an 11-minute video on it that explains the process, Medicare, how to go through the website. Uh, got some links to other resources that people can find out more about to help pay for their medical expenses. If you um, have lower income, you may qualify for help. 
Um, also, uh, I think most of y'all up front have a little flyer that um, I've used in my office. A number of doctors use it at Wellstar and a number of other nonprofits in Atlanta use. Um, it was actually designed by a woman who works at a local HR consulting company, VCG, and they shared this with all, the, all of their clients with the thinking being that the companies either had employees that were going to be getting older, going on Medicare, or they wanted, had employees who had older relatives and they'd want to help their relatives. Um, I think we all know that, you know, you can look at numbers differently, but um, the health care outcomes in Georgia are not the best in the country, unfortunately. Um, there's lots of research showing that decreasing the financial barrier to health care can um, provide better outcomes, decrease hospitalizations, decrease readmissions, etc. At Wellstar, where I work, there's a program called Meds to Beds. Um, when somebody leaves the hospital, they give them 30, they make sure they have 30 days of all of their medicines. Um, why are they picking 30 days rather than 40 days or 20 days? Um, Y'all may not know this, but if you're hospitalized on Medicare and you get rehospitalized in less than 30 days, Medicare doesn't pay a penny. Now you could leave the hospital because you'd had a heart attack. If you come back after 29 days because you're in a car accident and you broke a couple bones and you've got to be hospitalized for that, it doesn't matter why you're back in. You don't get paid a penny. So hospitals know that there's an incentive for them financially in addition to obviously helping patients if people can afford their medicines. Um, in, um, I, from what I read, um, Georgia's got the third highest number of hospitals that have closed in the last 10 years of anywhere in the country. Um, you know, you look at rural hospitals that have limited resources. If people can take their medicines, I think they're less likely to end up getting unnecessarily admitted and necessarily having to go to the ER. Um, and I think this can help. Um, and I've got, I've had letters of recommendation for this from the doctor who over, this isn't a Wellstar initiative, it's me, but um, I've had letters of recommendation from the doctor who oversees care for 50,000 people um, on Medicare at Wellstar, uh, former CEO of Visiting Earth Health System, and a number of other nonprofits in the Atlanta area and elsewhere throughout the country. Um, Again, looking at the numbers you can save, I think a lot of people want to help veterans in today's world. If you look at the statistics, um, you could save vets and their wives who are, or, sorry, vets and their spouses who are over 65, over $2 billion a year if they use these resources. Anyway, um, I went into this a few years ago thinking I'm going to talk to a bunch of doctors and I've talk, probably talked to 500 in different venues, four of whom knew about this. And they were going to all say this is great information and that's the feedback I've gotten. And they were going to all tell their patients and um, I was going to have saved the world and I don't know, move on to something else. Um, it didn't exactly work out that way. Uh, one of the barriers to this is everybody in healthcare, we're just too busy. I mean, I care about this, obviously, and I want to help my patients. But if I'm seeing 20 Medicare patients a day and I spend 15 minutes uh, with each of them trying to do this, um, that's an extra four hours onto my day, and I'm not that nice a person, unfortunately. Um, so I kind of said, okay, plan A didn't work. Let's come up with plan B, which is kind of why I'm here. Um, hmm. Okay, some things disappeared. Anyway, um, I would hope that, you know, y'all might consider doing some things to help publicize this. I'm going to throw out some pie-in-the-sky hopes, but I'd like to hear some suggestions y'all have because obviously I haven't been able to do this myself, and y'all have a perspective in dealing with your constituents that I'm never going to have. Um, when my kids were... Um, Going through driver's ed, we got a $150 tax credit uh, for them taking their driver's ed certificate. Um, the Georgia Cares asked people to put in 24 hours, which I think could let you counsel 24 people um, if you work as a volunteer there. Um, if you do the math, $368 times 24 people, that gives you about $9,000 a year in uh, savings, which is a return on investment of about 60 to 1. Um, I, my understanding is that the return on investment for the film credits in the country in the state are like six to one. 
you know, do I expect y'all to put up $800 million? No, I really don't. But, you know, if you could come up with a few hundred thousand dollars, uh, which, you know, is kind of a rounding error in the budget, you know, that could um, incentivize a couple thousand people to do this. Um, this hadn't been done anywhere else in the country. You know, if you can do it and it looks like it's going to be productive, then, you know, can consider doing more next year. Again, I realize that this is not the year to ask for money, but... Um, you know, all these people with cancer and diabetes, um, their cancer and diabetes are going to be a problem during the coming fiscal year, not just the subsequent years. So I'm hoping that's something that might be a possibility. Um, what are things that wouldn't cost money? Um, you know, maybe y'all could communicate this information with your constituents. Um, at our synagogue, I'm giving a talk in a few weeks uh, to a large women's organization that has chapters throughout the country. I'm hoping they're going to try to share this throughout the country. Um, I talked to somebody in an organization of a, a national organization of African American churches and they're taking a look at it. Um, it's, you know, I'm just kind of following a Southern tradition. You know, you throw up a lot of mud and you see what sticks. Um, so I'm hoping that, you know, y'all would kind of try to do what you could to share this with people, um, consider the possibility of a tax credit. And I would say that um, if you look at the second page of the handout, um, this isn't just me talking. The Medical Association of Georgia passed a resolution a couple months ago asking, among other things, for the Georgia legislature to help uh, promote these resources uh, by giving more money and publicizing Georgia Cares. Um, if somebody wants to use my website to help people, I think it's good. I wouldn't have spent the time on it if I didn't, but that's secondary. You know, it's the message. It's not the messenger. So I'm going to shut up, and um, I'd love to get some feedback from y'all on things that whatever thoughts y'all have on this. Well, Dr. Cohen, I'm, I'm a little confused. Okay, the sheet that you gave us, Medicare, or what, I mean, and, and we don't, that's one of the problems with the legislature. <laughs> Nothing is put into our bills or anything else. Uh, when we pass a bill, we count on a group spreading the word about it. Mm -hmm. Like, if we pass the bill about medicine, Mm -hmm. about OBGYNs. The OBGYN Society has to get that information out. We don't automatically have a PR firm or anybody okay. that gets that out to the public. Or like when we pass something on meningitis, um, sure. that you should have it. And, and I find that that is a problem because mm -hmm. if there's not a group associated with it, it doesn't get it out. Sure. So, but what I want to get to, what are you wanting us to get out? Are you saying that by going to your uh, website and there's a video that shows you how to go to the Medicare pan, plan finder? It, it does but you know again I don't I've had meetings with people at uh, the department under the Department of Age in Georgia Cares and I realize they've got their regulations they've got to go through and they can't use what I've got and that's fine I mean I was in a meeting there where a lot of people from other organizations were there and they shared it. So, I mean, if y'all want to do it individually, that's fine. Do that's I what think, I'm saying. Yeah, this, the, state, the state isn't going to, you know, say to go to my website, and I get that. Um, first, um, y'all communicate with your constituents on a number of levels. That would be helpful. Um, you know, maybe you could come up with a flyer that gets put in office, state offices where people go to frequently, the DMV, something similar to that. Maybe when people get their and maybe this is a county thing, so this wouldn't matter. Maybe you could have a few little sentences when people get their emission um, sticker, maybe when they get their property tax notices. Um, I don't, you know, I got thoughts on how potentially it could work. Um, and I'm sure, as you're saying, some of my thoughts are not realistic, but I've never been in the legislature, so I don't know. Oh, this. No, no, yeah. I'm, just, I'm just saying it's one that you pointed out, yeah. one of the problems that we have in that yeah. we don't have anything <laughs> automatically that we can use to mm. publicize anything we do which is really a shame but what i'm wanting to know is if i go to your medicare drug savings dot org can it, it will it show me how to go i mean i take one thyroid pill a day but if i took a bunch of medicine can i go to that website and find out how to find them at a cheaper price uh, definitely okay. that's what it's okay so do. if i put that out on my website for my constituents and I think, you know, that was all I'd have to do in a little blurb about how they could save money. I think it would, that would help. Um, actually, Kay Kirkpatrick asked me for some blurbs, so to speak, that could be used on social media that I sent her. And she said she thought that 
that they would be useful. So I can send that to you to if share you with will others. If do that, I will yeah. share it with the members of my committee. And because we're so backed up and there's other meetings going sure. on, I, we're missing a lot of members today. Okay. Uh, I'll be glad to share it with all of them Okay. And, and ask them to do it. And again, I'm sure a lot of y'all belong to organizations, churches, or whatever, where people want to do things to help the members or other people. You know, this is something that can help people. Well, I mean, so, I'm speaking to a group yeah. of 100 next week. So, yeah. I mean, that's the kind of thing that that, that we could do. Uh, Dr. Newton, Representative Newton, has a question. Thank you for that uh, presentation and for the program and the nonprofit that you set up. I know, I don't know if you're familiar with GoodRx that kind of helps those. That, yeah, I that, am. You, you know, you can learn the different prices and the dramatic difference. Mm -hmm. Is your website in some ways like that? If I put in the medicines I'm on and then someone uh, is, uh, uh, one plan might be better for me, but somebody on different medicines, uh, another plan would be much better for them. Yeah, that's a good question. And the answer is definitely no to that. The reason is that there's thousands of possible options throughout the country for the Medicare drug plans. And one, there's no way that I would ever be able to keep that up. And two, there's not a reason to. That's what the Medicare plan finder does. Okay. It shows you how to navigate the Medicare plan finder. You go to there and then you get that information. Thank you. And if you don't mind, are there really are there zero premium Medicare Part D plans? Um, I, no, and if you want a Medicare D, you've got to pay about $14 a month. Uh, there's about 15 Medicare Advantage plans that cover medicines that are $0 premium in Metro Atlanta. Thank you. Oh, wow. Okay, I have a question, and now you've scared me. <laughs> oh, and by the way, if you just take thyroid medicine, you can probably save money, too. Well, I know, but, <laughs> okay. but, but, but if there's something coming on, because I just... My corporation, I always had plan B and everything to the corporation didn't use anything, but I was made to use Medicare A. I have TRICARE for life now. They made me get B, but they didn't say anything about a drug plan. Yeah, I actually, um, again, like I Please. said, this is complicated. Um, I got a friend. He's a mechanic. He was in the military for over 20 years. His wife's a teacher. Uh, they spent six months... Um, trying to figure out how, what to do with Medicare, and I didn't know the answer. I spent like an hour making phone calls, and if you've got TRICARE for life, um, that covers your medicines. There's no reason oh, to get a drug plan. Thank you. I was about, <laughs> I was really getting panicked that I hadn't yeah. done, just in case I needed something more than a thyroid. Yeah, I mean, day. you know, you could, could, you know, I mean, and again, I, I'm just talking off the top of my head. I may be okay. wrong. Maybe you could say you want to pay $14 for a plan if something unexpected comes up to cover something that maybe your TRICARE won't cover. Yeah. That I don't know. I'm just guessing. Okay. Thank you. Are there other questions? Okay. I, if you will get me the blurb, I sure. promise you I will get it out. In fact, um, if you'll get it to me, I'll try to, we can put flyers on the floor or the mm -hmm. floor of the house and um, I will do a flyer and put it out on the floor of the house. Okay, great. I appreciate it. And, and that's 179 of us. Yeah. So. And the last thing I'll just throw out is um, I think all y'all got electronic versions of the handouts there. At the bottom of the um, resolution from the Medical Association of Georgia, I got my contact information. If anybody wants to talk about maybe how to share this with other people, I'd love to talk to y'all. Thank you. And wait, 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 wait. Oh. Representative Silcox. Yes. Um, uh, thank you so much, Dr. Cohen, for coming, especially after we spoke at the Cobb County uh, event, uh, Medical Association. I appreciate you coming um, and was just, just hopeful when you send the blurbs, if you would make sure you include your website and your information oh, sure. as well as, you know, the, the, I guess, the more public information that the sure. medical okay, association. Okay, can do that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. okay. And, I, and here again, I apologize for the fact that we changed the committee meeting on you from two mm -hmm. weeks. And I know you have to see patients, and I apologize for that. It was unavoidable because we were out of session, and then you had to wait an, an extra hour for us, and I apologize for that, sir. So um, I'm here for an extra hour, and y'all are here for an extra six weeks every okay. year. I appreciate what y'all are doing. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. We'll get that information out and at least try to get it out to more citizens in Georgia. Thank you. Okay, let's see. Um, we are going to, uh, we have the room until 3 o'clock, uh, and uh, Representative Dempsey has gone to Grady to the hospital to be with Representative Smith, and so we won't be hearing her bill. So, Representative Gaines, you have a dental bill for us. Oh, they didn't bring us up. Oh, it needs an amendment, so they're in there. 
I'll be brief uh, because I know we only have the room for a little bit longer, but House Bill 521 LC 338285S. And the purpose of this bill uh, is to allow non-Georgia licensed dentists to practice dentistry and treat low-income patients in Georgia on a volunteer basis for a five-day period at charitable dental, dental events, which includes free and charitable clinics and continuing education courses for dentists. The Dental Practice Act currently has a volunteer license statute, statute uh, but is intended for long-term licenses. This language will create a short-term volunteer license for dentists who wish to volunteer at weekend events or take a continuing education course. All procedures performed by these licen licensees will be under the direct supervision of a Georgia licensed dentist. The Georgia Dental Association has worked with us on the language to include several patient safety protection measures into the bill, including creating a nexus between the, uh, these out-of-state dentists who may never come back to Georgia after volunteering and allowing the Board of Dentistry to review and approve requests for volunteer events and continuing education events to ensure that low-income patients know who treated them and who will be responsible for providing aftercare and keeping their patient records following the event. I'm happy to go line by line on the bill uh, and explain specifics, but um, I'm not sure that's necessary. And Scott, with the Georgia Dental Associations here as well, I'm happy to answer any questions. Scott, you want to come up and add anything? or? No, Madam Chair. Uh, I just wanted to say thank you for rep to Representative Gaines for helping us with this, and thank you, Madam Chair, for working us with this as well. And especially thank you to Betsy. Uh, we uh, had uh, some late night emails last night, so um, I'll be happy to any answer any questions you may have. It, it's strictly volunteer. There's no um, charges to the patient. It's strictly um, low income patients, and it's actually the definition of low income is defined in the, in the code section um, that we reference. Uh, I know Representative Howard, this came out of our Georgia Missions of Mercy, where we do basically a two-day free dental clinic, and it's open to all adults who do not have dental insurance or, you know, ha have no means to pay for dental care. And uh, Representative Howard, we held it at the James Brown Arena in Augusta in 2018, and he was gracious enough to spend some, some time with us and see how we uh, provided dental care to a lot of his constituents and constituents from around the state. So I'll be happy to answer any questions. I mean, it's pretty impressive. I, I attended one in Woodstock several years ago. And to, I mean, y'all were even making false teeth. Yes, ma'am. For people that needed them there. So I mean, it was really an impressive situation. Representative Sharper. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I was just wondering, is there any way that we could get like emails of when you guys are having those uh, type events? Um, so, you know, we can be a part of it, also get the word out in our communities. Absolutely. And, and to be quite candid, this doesn't just benefit the Georgia Dental Association. This benefits any charitable organization, nonprofit organization that wants to hold uh, an event, you know, for veterans. I mean, anything that there's um, a nonprofit organization established. The other component is, of course, the continuing education. And we feel that that's important to help train dentists. Um, and get some care from some specialists that may not be based in Georgia, but can come to Georgia and teach classes. Um, one of the things that we um, are looking forward to is, is potentially addressing some of the special needs population. Um, for those of you that don't know, the dental colleges have agreed to uh, include in their curriculums going forward a component for special needs dentistry. So all dental students across the country will be qu required to have education on treating special needs populations. And we feel like that's one thing that we could address with our continuing education courses through the GDA. All right. Thank you so much. And if it's the time, I'll, I wouldn't mind making a motion if you want. Okay. Are there any other questions? We do have who? Uh, Representative Howard. Uh, since you call my name Scott, I guess sir. I'll reciprocate. And uh, I, this is a great pro program. We had asked for it uh, probably five years prior to getting it over in, in, in Augusta. And, you know, at the end of the day, I think those two day, two day session, you, know, you, you would see uh, constituents that maybe came in the coming to the uh, center, uh, and they were actually doing fix. what do you call it when you give a person a new, whole new set of teeth? Uh, yeah, we were doing dentures. I mean, dentures, we were, yes, yeah, sir. <laughs> right, yeah. 
I mean, they were doing dentures on the spot. I mean, within two days, and uh, it, it's amazing what, what, what I witnessed, and I would like to just uh, second the motion when uh, my car friend, Dexter Shopper, make the motion. Okay, and I have uh, one question now, you know, I have this thing about the dental hygienist. So are we saying, like starting with line 17, that um, if the dental hygienist wanted to hold a charitable event, a charitable, or is it just when? The no, ma'am, this is, so I believe the language that we presented to you only addresses dentists, um, but I've spoken with Representative Gaines and with Betsy um, because I know that we had, you had mentioned the dental hygienist as well, so I believe there's language in front of you that, that can incorporate that in the amendment. Right, so you're asking for this to be an amendment because that's what... Well, I, I mean, I, we're not asking for it, but no, if you but feel... It means, no, it, well, I, because Dr. I Weinman, who <laughs> told me that this had already been incorporated. Yes, ma'am. Okay. We're happy. It, the amendment um, should be in the folder, and we're definitely happy to... Um, if, if that's the will of the committee. Okay. All right. Are there other questions? All right. Can I, uh, Representative Dexter, you're recognized for a motion. We do pass. Okay. And got a, got, we have a motion and a second for do pass. Now I'm going to offer an amendment. Uh, I d would like to offer the amendment in that is enlisted, uh, enclosed in your folders, AM 331928. Discussion on the amendment. And you are correct, madam. It's just to any time there's an opportunity for a, a charitable dental event or continuing education course, hygienists and dentists would be able to, you know, utilize the same provision. I see. Okay. Okay, no discussion. On that, we'll then let's vote on the the amendment. Everyone in favor of AM three three one nine two eight, say aye. aye. Anyone opposed? No. Okay, the ayes have the amendment. So we now have on the floor um, a recommendation that we do pass LC thirty three eight two eight five S, the substitute to House Bill five twenty one as amended and it will go out as a substitute so everybody know we've got it everybody in favor we have a second everybody in favor of the passage say aye, aye. anyone opposed no okay the ayes have it thank you very much and we are adjourned and thank you very much and i appreciate all of my colleagues on the other side of the aisle you were the ones left waiting here thank you very much uh, we caused it on our side of the aisle. I apologize and thank you for coming back and allowing us to move this forward.